Hello and welcome back. We have understood how PCA works, principal component analysis works. It actually takes the covariance matrix and then covariance and covariance matrix of your data and then applies eigenvalue decomposition which ca which extracts the principal components and eigenvalues, the explained variance ratio and then take the required number of principal components and multiply your data set and you get uh, the transformed data. That's how PCA works, the simple words. Kernel PCA is a little advanced uh, algorithm, you, you know, it's called as multifold learning and uh, the kernel PCA can extract uh, the more complex patterns from data set. How it will do is, it will take the original data set and apply kernel trick after that it applies the PCA. You no, know, it's a two stage process. Take the original data set, apply kernel trick, then apply PCA. When, I, when you apply the kernel trick on the original data set, the original data set becomes an M by M data set. If the data set is M by N data set, the, after applying kernel trick, it becomes M by M. If you have any questions about this, right, you can go back to the kernel trick in SVM, kernel SVM, and understand. Same trick is applied here. It's a mathematical trick which actually tries to find out the dissimilarities between each record and other records and keep, you know, create that as a row. So when you calculate first record and uh, the dissimilarity between the first record and all M records, you will get M values. That becomes the first row. Second record and all M values, M records, you will get M values again. Like that for M records, you will get M values. So it becomes a M by M matrix. When you are calculating dissimilarity, like uh, using the RBF kernel, it's going to extract essence and it is going to give each cell a number which is close to one if both records are close to each other. It is going to give a number which is close to zero if the records are far from each other, something like that, right? So you convert your data set using kernel trick and then you apply PCA, it is going to extract more you know, complex patterns from the data set. So we have taken a Swiss roll data set from uh, scikit-learn. The data set is like this, it is more complex, it is not linear, right? So there are three variables in there, three input features, x1, x2 and x3. And we would like to extract two components, n components is equal to two. The algorithm here is in decomposition, kernel PCA. And in kernel PCA, we are specifying that n components is equal to two. So out of three, we want to extract two. And then kernel is equal to linear and fit inverse transform is equal to two. So, you know, if you want to do inverse transformation and try to see whether the PCA uh, converted data is good or not, you should definitely specify, while creating the object itself, you should definitely specify inverse transform is equal to true. So, one of the approaches I said, right, you take the PCA algorithm, it is kernel PCA or PCA, and then fit transform, you transform your data, the three, three column data into two column data and use inverse transform method you on the object right and then the two column data set you convert back into three columns and then try to see the original data and the in reverse inverse transformed data are similar to each other or not if they are similar that means the pca or kernel pca worked well if not it is not so to do that measure you know that to to check the metric and see whether the model the PCA, kernel PCA worked well or not, we used inverse transform is equal to true here. So, if you want to do inverse transform and check, you need to use this variable, the parameter is equal to true, rather you can leave it. By default, it is false. So, I am building, you know, I am actually converting the, uh, the R, I am extracting two components from the three component data set using linear kernel, RBF kernel and sigmoid kernel. I am using three kernels. We have seen RBF kernel, right? It is e power minus uh, x minus l norm square divided by sigma sigma square 2 sigma square right so linear kernel means uh, direct subtraction sigmoid kernel means sigmoid function right so we'll use sigmoid function to measure the dissimilarity okay so i applied three kernels and tried to see how exactly the data got transformed so this data when i extracted only two columns right it transformed like this now, visually, it looks like the first one, the linear kernel and sigmoid kernel work well, but the you know, RBF did not, but that's not true, okay? When you, you know, to decide which kernel works best, 
we have two approaches one way is to take the data set right the two transformed data set two column data set and build a model and see you know the y variable is there and you can build a supervised uh, model you build it and see if you cannot do that then you inverse transform the two column data set to three columns and then try to measure the distance between the original data and the inverse transform data so let us see so i actually took this original data set and the target variable i converted into a classification problem if the you know value is greater than 6.9 i am putting 1 if it is less than or equal to 6.9 i am putting 0 so it's a classification data set now so i have taken a pipeline the kernel pca and the logistic regression and then uh, i took uh, the, for the kernel pca gamma and uh, for the uh, the kernel pca kernel rbf and sigmoid so two sigmoid two you know kernels it will take as parameters for kernel pca and build two different uh, conversions and you know the, the pca conversions and then apply it onto the logistic regression so when we did that did set cv we found that the rbf kernel with uh, gamma value 4.333 is the best so now the grid set cv is one approach the supervised learning you know you take the outcome of the unsupervised learning algorithm and put it into a supervised learning problem and see how the model is working that is one approach and out of different kernel different hyper parameters which one to choose you will understand so out of these three kernels you now the rbf and sigmoid two kernels rbf is the best we found okay the second approach is reconstruction so i have taken the rbf kernel and you know uh, transformed the data and then inverse transformed it and reconstructed i took three columns reduce it to two reconstruct it to three right when you reconstruct original data will not come it will actually generate an approximate values of the original data and uh, i took linear uh, kernel and again did inverse transform and then i am to taking the mean squared error between the original x and the rbf reconstructed data the original x and the re linear you know uh, kernel uh, re inverse transform data so when you look at the errors right 32 and 51 so rbf is working good the gap between the reconstruction and the original is less so that means the understanding is better okay in these two ways, you can actually find you now which kernel is best to convert your data set. Okay. So the last point I wanted to make is we can actually extract, uh, you know, if you if you hear n components, I said two, right? But in this particular kernel SVM, we can say thousand also here because in the original data set, in the original data set, if you look at the dimensionality of the original data set, there are thousand rows. See this? X has got 1000 rows. When you apply kernel trick, it becomes a 1000 by 1000 matrix. And while extracting the PCA, the components, you can extract 1000 components. Even though the original data is of 3 columns, right? What is the original data? 3 columns. But after applying kernel PCA, right, it becomes 1000 by 1000. If you don't specify components, n components is equal to 2, it becomes a 1000 by 1000 data set. Let us let us try to see let us try to see right so let me take this and put it here and then uh, take out the that thing right n components i took out right and rest rest are all fine and i am trying to show you what this uh, you know uh, 1000 P pca 1000 i put here okay so when you apply kernel trick, what happens? It converts your data set into m by m, right? So, so it will not reduce now. It will make it will make it a big one, right? Thousand by thousand, it will make. So you can you can actually extract uh, you know thousand features also. Even though there are three columns only, you can extract thousand columns from the data set but that's not the right thing i am just trying to show you that kernel trick is working in between the pca and the data set the kernel trick is working hmm. sorry 
sorry, I forgot to put a bracket here. See that? 997. And almost 1000 it generated. Right? So, that's, that's how it is. Okay? So, that's it on kernel PC. Thank you.